for the first official response from the Trump campaign. And joining me now exclusively, Mercedes Schlapp, Trump's senior campaign advisor, former White House uh, director of strategic comms, Mercedes. Um, you guys worried about anyone tonight? Be honest. You're, you're trembling. No, it's it's quite an entertaining night, you have to admit, because what you're starting to see is this divide amongst Democrats where you have these governors saying, wait a second. These policies are way too radical for America, and we can't force it down their throats. And they're admitting to it. They are admitting, some of these candidates are admitting that the Democrat Party is going far left. And that's where you're starting to see the Democrat Party in disarray, the Democrat Party being chaotic, where they don't really know what direction they're going in. So Hickenlooper, Bullock from Montana, there were various points in time, I mean, they bash Trump, they have to, but various points in time, I listen to them going, gosh, if you only worked with the president on some of these issues, it, you guys could probably accomplish a lot. So it's it's hard for them. And then Tim Ryan was just totally bollocked up on trade because he's Ohio. And he's like, well, I, I don't want to answer on steel tariffs because, of course, it's helped Ohio. They're, they're kind of boxed in on the working class voter. I saw that repeatedly. And that is a problem for the Democrats. It just is. Yeah, there's no question, obviously, that they're making a play for the union voters. I mean, obviously, you saw Trump go, go out and give this, the, the beginning pre-debate speech. And at one point, I was asking myself, is Trump going to run for president next? Uh, and so they are trying to make a play. The problem has become is that President Trump or the, really has honed in on helping the American worker. I mean, this is why we've seen a boom when it comes to manufacturing jobs. It's why you've seen wages increase, and it's increased particularly for blue-collared workers. So the president, because he has been strong on trade, strong against China being the bad actor, it's benefited the American worker. The Democrats, they don't even have a coherent line of where they're headed with the American worker, which is, I think, troubling for them. And their only solution is, Let's get more government involved. Let's make sure you get free health care. And, you know, if oh, yeah. we can get your wages up, that's great. One of the other things they kept saying is, and this was toward the end of the debate, well, we need to work more with the EU to, to put pressure on China. I'm thinking, what do they think the Trump administration has, <laughs> has been, been doing? doing. <laughs> and, and, and the answer to so much of what they said tonight is, and certainly tomorrow with Biden, is you had eight years. If these ideas are so obvious and you could have transformed our economy... What, 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 where was that? Yeah, and I mean, just remember that President Trump has also made the comment of, well, Bernie has been the one against NAFTA and the one against TPP. But remember, we still have USMCA that's stuck in Congress because Nancy Pelosi hasn't moved it forward. So here you have these Democrats. Again, you see more chaos, more division. They're not agreeing on the policies, but the policies that are the loudest in that room are the more radical ones. It's Medicare for all that we know is going to be tremendously costly. Oh, we we know they're going to increase taxes on middle class. Oh, no, no. They, 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 each of them stumbled. And said Beto, who just fantasy lands, said, no, no one's taxes are going to go. Okay. Well, and Warren said that, too, that yeah. she, you know, it's not going to be yeah, middle no, class. No, she said it. Tax. She said overall. Overall. She dodged it. I listened very overall, uh, overall, the cost won't go up. Okay. Well, Mercedes, I also want to get your reaction to CNN's latest focus group fiasco. How many of you, show of hands, are optimistic that a Democrat will win in 2020? I think that a blind optimism is how we got Trump. We really need a candidate that is going to increase Democratic turnout and not a candidate that's going to convince Trump voters to vote for them because it's not going to happen. I'm usually optimistic about a lot of things, but I'm really afraid of this next election. OK, well, of course, we find out that Detroit's actually doing a little bit better. Michigan's doing better, a lot of it because of Trump's policies, uh, trade policies and so forth. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I really think that the Democrats are trying to find yeah. their their player, the person they think who can win. I mean, that's what they want to focus on. Yet, their options are those that will just take America far to the left. And so here you have a president that's been results-oriented, common sense, practical, trying to find you got to take the temperature solution. down, though, Mercedes, right? The temperature's got to come down a little bit. I mean, the suburban women... You, you do want them to turn out. I think a lot of them There's do like no the question. president. But the temperature can't stay hot, 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 hot but all Laura, the time. But, Laura, the hypocrisy of the Democrats saying that they want to secure the border, yet they have done nothing yeah. on the Hill to get this done. I think done. President Trump could go into Baltimore with four or five public sector, private sector folks and in a, in a week come up with five policies that have worked elsewhere. Yeah. 
and just say, try these. Let's but, try these. But, I'll help you. And he's starting with opportunity yeah. zones and investments, with criminal justice reform, with the fact we got to move towards school choice and not just allow for these broken schools. We have policies that we know are going to work. And the question work. are, yeah. are the Democrat leaderships that have been ingrained in these cities, in these urban cities, are they willing to try new ways instead of sticking to the status quo? Yeah, it's almost like, you know, Shelby Steele, uh, Bob Woodson said on my podcast today, I'd go around Elijah Hummings, Cummings yes. to the people, the real disruptors on the ground who are making a difference in places like Baltimore. President could work with them, make a huge difference. Mercedes, great to see you. Great to see you. In your new role.